Thank you very much for staying with us. If you're just joining in, this is the Nigerian Broadcasting Network. And it is time for us to have some serious conversations, very much in line with the Nigerian political space, the Nigerian uh, security landscape, and what is provided for by the Constitution. We have joining us to have this conversation a guest on the topic national security, role of state governors as chief security officers. Gabriel, do the honors of introducing our guests. All right, we have joining us via telephone this morning, uh, Barrister Stanley Dien. He is a legal practitioner and also a public affairs analyst uh, to take a look at what Ashashi just talked about. Uh, so, Barrister, let me just fire the first shot, even though, though it's not a shot per se. We've heard the saying that governors are the chief security officers of their state based on the law. How true is that? Or is it just, are there mere words to massage the egos of governors? Hi, good morning, Nigerians. And good morning, uh, over there. Uh, basically, uh, the, no, the normal uh, mantra that the governors are the chief of state. I mean, to be very, very frank, constitutionally speaking, and in fact, how them is not true. And maybe, I mean, the, the governors are the chief executive officer so long as the administration of the state is concerned. And naturally, to that extent, they are equally excited a certain degree of power. Some of them are talking about another, including that of security of the state. However, constitutionally speaking, uh, the powers of the government with respect to the security of the state are being the of the that is highly limited by our constitution. Uh, the, the government by section 5 top two of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and you see the chief executive of the state, and therefore has certain degree of powers acceptable by him based on the laws made by the state House of assembly of the respective state. And to that extent, you know, so the laws made by the state House of assembly are concerned, one can say the, the governor is the chief and uh, made enforcer, so to speak. Uh, without prejudice to whoever he delegates the power to. The same, uh, Section 5 also gives power to the section, Subsection 1 of the 99 Constitution as amended, also the power to the president. However, the, 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 uh, the, the, the powers of the government with respect to the security of the state is actually limited. When you look at the uh, Section 215 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, we are amended, hearing the 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 inspect so that provision established of course the office of the inspector general of police where the the uh, we are appointed by the president uh, from the advice of the uh, 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 police council itself. Now if you look at section two one five of the United Constitution top two and down you find out that the last it gives the, the, uh, in fact, sub, uh, sub, uh, section 2 of 5, sub three of the Constitution, gives the governor a certain degree of power to excite over. In other words, the governor can give order or directive to the Commission of Police of a state. However, there is a provider in sub section uh, uh, 215, sub 4, which says that, provided that in such orders or directives that the state governor may give, they must be referred to, you understand, either the IG, I, IGP of the police or the president or any person to whom the president will delegate his power, including the ministers of the federation. And in fact, some section 5 of 215 says that no court in Nigeria can inquire into that directly given, you understand, by the president to any of his subordinates to the minister, the case may be as the adequacy of the wise of that directive. So, when you look at the, even the under the police act itself, I uh, mean, 2020 as amended, you'll find out also that, that it, 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 it is not the government, the government is not even mentioned to the action of being chief general officer, rather, the special general police, you understand, carries out very, very, I mean, uh, exhaustive powers in terms of being chief general of the state, subject to the powers and directives of the president. And of course, if you look at section 
205 again, even says that while the state got 205 subsidies, which accord the governor of the state some level of power over the police, in terms of directive as it were, it even and also in exercise of powers of the of the of the, of the state as assembly made in the chief executive of the state. It also in saying that in government, in exercising its power under section two one five twelve three, cannot do so to undermine the power of the federal government. All right, all right, Barrister, if if I may interrupt, so, uh, Barrister so Stanley. Sorry, I, I would have no. to. I would have to come in at, at this point. Um, okay. You have indeed provided us a robust understanding of what the Constitution provides for, but also it clearly also, um, highlights some of the worries that Nigerians have. The fact that it would appear the Constitution in itself contradicts itself. It would appear that we are, in, on one hand, giving um, powers to the governors, and in another hand, um, taking it back. It, it, I mean, if you're saying that someone is a chief security officer of his state, it means that he understands the landscape better and he should be able to exercise certain level of power and should contribute to certain decisions. Um, but in, in recent time, you know, just using the Lagos State situation as an example, we saw clearly there... Uh, a governor's orders being defied. We saw clearly there a governor's disposition to a security situation being ignored. So where exactly do we stand as far as, you know, what is provided for and if it truly works? Uh, let, me come, let me come in there uh, specifically to say that, to be very frank, the House of Nigerian and to the Constitution, I'm afraid that there is nowhere where it is mentioned specifically that the governor is the chief security officer of the state. I have told you clearly that, and in fact, there is no ambiguity in the provision of the constitution. The constitution made provision to say that the governor can exercise certain degree of power over the commissioner of police in the state by way of giving directives. That the government, the constitution may provide for saying that that directive is excitable, subject to reference to the, to the federal government through the vice, uh, sorry, the president of the federation or the IGP of police and provided situation where that can happen. You understand, we are in the federation. The law and the constitution is used now, the way it appears now, it will be very, very unconstitutional to say that in practice and the two letters of the world that the government will take to the chief federal officer. The mantra has been going on that in practice I know that the governors appreciate that because over time, the governors have actually been expressing the fact that they are lame up. You understand? Of course, within the territory of the state, one expects that the governors should be the, the total control of it. But of course, in practice, that is not the case. You know, as the Constitution concerns, so it will not be correct to say that the Constitution is contradictory with respect to whether or not the governor of the state is the chief director of the state. However, one will expect that in their agitation for to federalism, you understand, and therefore in a true federalism, the government should be seen to have a very absolute control over security situation within the territorial integrity of the state itself, you understand, and until such amendment is carried out in the constitution, that is the situation we are going to find here now, that is the truth. However, what we should be looking at, in respect to the Magogo issue, the same issue and all of that, again, the issue at hand also exposes the, the fact that there are the Constitution, the laws may provide certain things and all of that. The exercise of the powers under the Constitution is subject to the good conscience of those who operate of the exercise of it. Now, if we agree that yes, the Constitution has not been able, has not given the government enough power to exercise very, very important functions of the state, in terms of security of the state. If we look at the, the fact emerging from the Marogo issue, this on a uh, landlord, there were landlords, certain persons who own land within the Marogo area in question, who were deprived of their land by, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, former military administration in Lagos State. Mm. And evidence to the best of our knowledge says that these persons were not compensated. And they went to court by 2012. In fact, in the High Court, when they went to High Court, the High Court gave a decision in their favor that there should be allocated plots of land. Now, the, the, the government appeal 
to the court of appeal, and the court of appeal gave a judge in favor of the landlord owner. And they went to the Supreme Court, they were also affirm the judgment, the concurrent judgment of the, of the, of the, of the court of appeal. Mm. But the labor statement failed to carry out the enforcement of the judgment of the Supreme Court. It was on the basis of that that these landlords were petitioned the office of the Attorney General that referred the matter to, to the Supreme Court that also affirmed that yet there was a judgment. And some are along the line, <coughs> others were given for a, a rate of enforcement. Of course, you know very well that under the most circumstances, the Attorney General does not carry the enforcement of judgment. Mm. Ordinary by the uh, Civil, civil uh, the Sheriff and Civil Process Act, which has not, of course, amended. It is the Deputy Sheriff that ought to have carried that. But evidence are found that the Lagos State government, to which the, uh, the, the, the Deputy Sheriff is answerable to, mm. fails to carry out that order because of the vested interest of Lagos State. And that was why, when the amending I mean, another petition was presented in 2019, so the Attorney General of the Federation, the Attorney General was afforded to have written to the Attorney General of Lagos State for, I mean, for his view. And they did that to so call the long story short. What has transpired in Lagos State also shows that while it is intended that the governor of the state should be the chief judge officer, we should also look at the governor of the state exercising that power in such a way that it will not become abusive. Because here we are, a general Supreme Court was frustrated, you understand, by the state government. So when we have a say where the government becomes too well, we say, how honest, how generally are they going to carry out that function? That is not to say that the federal government itself too has not also been in breach of such enforcement. So uh, uh, whether right. or not the government, the governor or the, the government is the of the state or not, what is important is that operators of the constitution civil and of course the paramilitary and military mm. to be able to be very, very obedient to the rule of law itself. Okay, so let, let me come in here. Yeah. Okay, if, if I heard you correctly, earlier you mentioned that uh, the governors are not the chief security officers of their state, but they are the chief um, law enforcement officers. I don't know if, if I got you correctly. The chief executive. The oh, chief executive. Okay. Now, now is, is it like, um, can I describe the governors when it comes to law enforcement as someone who has the yam but does not have the knife to actually peel that yam? No, 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 no. That may not be correct to some extent. What they're saying is, no, we are a federation. Now, there are law, there are, under the, uh, under, there are, in other words, if any law that is made by the state government, any agency that is under the exclusive control of the state government, the governor is totally in control and can exercise his power except subject to interpretation of the court. Understand? But where there is, an overflow, for example, under the concurrent list, the legislative list, mm. where the state and the federal government make law. You understand? There's a principle they call the principle of covering the field, meaning that where a state makes a law and the federal government, the like, National Assembly, makes a law, and the, the, that issue that the state has made a law, the federal government has made the law is that the law of the federal government under that circumstance is supporting that of the state under the principle of covering the field where there is a conflict. Of course, that will be resolved by the court. You understand? So, in strict terms, the powers of the government with respect to the laws made by the state is almost absolutely subject to the interpretation of the court as the state may be, or subject to what the, the state assembly, you understand, in, in, in normal circumstances can override. However, where it has to do with the powers of the federation, where they, where, for example, under the con concurrent legislative list, mm. that the federal government will supersede. So, what you find is that there are divergences, there are different degrees of power. Some may not take any the arms over as it should be, all in terms of. So, actually, there is no contradiction within the Constitution. It is just the operational challenges, as it were. Sometimes these are affected by vested interests, like we find in the Magogo case. You understand? So, the truth was that we wouldn't have been here if the Lagos State government had carried out the judgment of the Supreme Court. We wouldn't have been here if the Lagos State I mean, Governor, at the point in time when he was taking over the land, had taken steps to, to compensate the landlord owners, the land owners. You understand? If they had done so, we would have been here. So I think, without prejudice to the fact that I am of the view that the government should be 
power and teaching offices that should be increased to a level that is able to ensure they teach another in the state. I will not be an advocate that in establishing such power should be done with an act with impunity. No, that will be the other very state. I agree the committee of which is true that the, the attorney general of the federation is not the chief enforcer of I mean the enforcer enforcer of the judgment of the court. Mm. There are procedures. So you find that in this man who was case, the intervention of the attorney general and the attorney general of police was predicated on the serial failure, neglect, refusal, what the kind of the government of Lagos State to do what was worthwhile. That is not to justify that the carrying that intervention is truly set the interest of the law. That you must be able to stick on and to hold the Lagos State government for refusing first to even I mean uh, uh, take the power, you know. The power, the, 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 the I'm sorry, to claim the land without carrying compensation, you know, other land use acts. The land use acts where the government is the chief, in fact, of, uh, it has a very, very uh, power, power. Who's the land in cost in, in, in trust? Uh, all right. Um, yes, it is in trust for the people. Thanks for that. You understand? Bar Barrister, it, Barrister um, I, I, I would like to also come in here. You again. You have highlighted the need for us to ensure that even with you know the absolute power, there should be a progressive and honourable use of it, and and that is without impunity. Now, Leg the Lagos State situation is one of many situations that governors in Nigeria Nigeria have found themselves um, unable to make active decisions or executive decisions for their people. And, of course, security have always been at the center of it, but we also have conversations in regards to, um, you know, the ability to make economic situ um, decisions uh, for their states or, you know, just having access to certain resources and being able to harness it for the good of the locals in that state. Now, as yeah. you rightly pointed out earlier, we are running a federal system, and a federal system allows for these states' governors to be executive leaders of their states, and which also translates to having some sort of executive powers in regards to um, taking decisions that affect the well-being of their people, whether economic or security-wise. And that has yeah. called for a lot of conversations in the light of restructuring our constitution. And so I would like to hear your thoughts on whether or not you think that what we currently have in the constitution works well or there is indeed a need for restructuring. No, uh, as a matter of fact, I am a true advocate of, I mean, redeeming, you know, uh, looking at certain positions of the Constitution, no matter, I mean, I tell you what we call it, whether it's talking about socialism or what it is, I believe very well there are certain provisions that we need to work into. By the grace of God, I've been involved in the uh, legislative processes uh, that is leading to the men of the Constitution and other things, and, you know, uh, in the conversation that is going on, an effort are going in that direction. So that we were enabled both the federal and the state and indeed the local government, you know, to carry that function very, very well. That is the fact. So I, I believe the need for restructuring. But also, why we wait for that restructured system? It was also as operators of the Constitution. Whether as chairman of local government, whether as governor, whether as the, the president, attorney general of the, of the state, and of course of the federation and as it were, as the second Inspector General of Police, Commissioners of Police, we should be honest and operator, the author of the Constitution. We shouldn't allow the impunity. Let me tell you, even if today we have a restructured Nigeria as we are the case, we will take the humanity, we will take the sincerity of purpose of every enforcer, even if the citizens themselves, for God's sake. Look at what we do on traffic. Do we obey them and it's what? You know, fine. A lot of the impunity will suffer today. The island that is, we are caused by ourselves too. I am of the view that yes, the condition should be rejected, you know, first should be restructured in such a way that to enable all operators to carry out their duties so that Nigeria will have better and better governance. But let me tell you this. Well, in the constitution, there are so many provisions that are not being implemented, which are also being advocated for. Let me give an example, a digression now. We are all asking that the federal government are taking or is taking too much in terms of resources. You understand? And therefore, there is need for the state to be allowed to either control resources as it were. But are you aware that, for example, that while in, in the First Republic, you understand, any revenue generated by this region, 
every revenue whatsoever was shared 50 50. Even if you plan Coco, you plan Farm 3 as a regional government or a state government as it is now, in those days, you were supposed to give 50 percent to the center and control 50 percent, 50 percent. But do you know that currently under the current constitution, the in the state invest in agriculture, for example, like planting of palm tree, uh, planting of cocoa or anything, rubber, and what have you. Under the current constitution, the state is not paying a dime to the federal government. Are you aware of that? Very well. The question we ask ourselves is, are the state government exploring this opportunity? You understand? In those days, the federal Republic. Even if you do that, you share with the center. Uh, okay. But now you don't do it. Meaning that the problem is not necessarily the fact that our constitution is not helping us. Yeah, there are areas that we need to improve. The problem also includes that we are not very, very imaginative. We are not very, very, I mean, we are not applying our original thinking faculty. We are not very, very pragmatic. If you are pragmatic, even the constitution is now, however imperfect, there are certain things we can do as a governor. To allow the same function. Look at uh, the okay, uh, local government area. Okay, uh, we quick, are quickly. asking for a restructure Nigeria. Uh, we should be expecting that the state governments in particular are allowing the local government to enjoy their own areas of power. But I was, I was even. Ah, and they are doing that. I, I was going to draw our attention to that. Would the local government be allowed to exist? True. So the federal, uh, state, and other operators have a duty, you know, to ensure that at any point in time, the well-being and the interests of the people. Is carried out and that the law are there to be that, not to be in the idiosyncrasy of the operator. Okay, okay, very quickly, because I was going to talk about uh, the local government autonomy and how the governors are handling the affairs of the, uh, the fronts of the local governments. But since you've mentioned that, quickly in one minute, uh, let me just go straight to the point. Looking at how governors have been handling funds meant for local government and some decisions they take, which have made many to describe some of them as more like emperors in their various states. Do you actually think uh, uh, it's time Nigeria is ripe for state policing? In one minute, please. In all sincerity, in all sincerity, I have my fear. I am for state policing, in all sincerity. But in, in practical operation of the thing now, I doubt if you are right for it. Because, I mean, look at what, what, we, what happens at the state level. Whether it's in the election, you know very well that as far as our electoral process is concerned, you know what I make, as far as the inefficiency of I make is concerned, we, if you look at the election conducted by the state in local government mm. and the election conducted by the INEC, mm. you know what the, the state uh, the, uh, electoral body compared to that of the INEC, you find that the INEC is doing better than what the states are doing. So I think while I believe very well that look, we, we need to reject a system whereby I mean the states be giving more powers, including uh, state police as it were, mm. my emphasis is the fact that if only there should be steps, because I have in fact in one of my uh, my contributions in the ongoing conversation and effort to amend the constitution, the fact that yes we should not state police. Okay. But there should be very serious steps. Okay. You understand? All to right. Ensure that such powers are not abused. Okay. Let us not be running away from federal impunity, only to now be subjected to either greater impunity or even some impunity by the state. So there should be very clear checks. You understand? Okay. In those legislative processes that will bring about state impunity, if indeed we are ready for it as well now. Thank you very much, Barrister Stanley Dean, for Thank joining you. us on the morning bigger this morning. My pleasure, please. Happy New Year, Nigeria. Same here.